In this guide, we'll go over all of the actions the warrior learns from level 50 to 90 in order. We'll go over how each action is meant to be used, and when applicable, the recommended way to use it. We will also summarize changes to the rotation at level 60, 70, and 80. In the general summary, we will take time to outline both an opener and general rotation. I will assume you have already seen my guide which covers level 1 to 50, and I will also assume that you are acquainted with abbreviations like GCD, OGCD, and Weaving. I will only be briefly touching on the aspect of defensive cooldown cycling, which is probably better explained in my tank's basics guide. So if you feel any of these aspects are not familiar to you, please view the corresponding videos in the top right corner. Before we go through new actions, let's briefly cover changes introduced with Endwalker. Berserk now grants you 3 stacks of a 15 second buff, which makes your next 3 weapon skills guaranteed to do critical direct hits. To best make use of this, here are some level 50 examples of sequences of GCDs to use after Berserk. For single target, it mainly revolves around 2 inner beasts and Storm's path. For two targets, you replace the inner beasts with Steel Cyclone, and for three or more, replace Storm's Path with either another Steel Cyclone or Mithril Tempest. Some of these combos are done more consistently with Infuriate, others require Infuriate, so it may be beneficial to save one charge of Infuriate for Berserk. Mithril Tempest now applies the same buff as Storm's Eye, the buff now being named Surging Tempest, without requiring that you have the buff to begin with. This changes your AoE rotation to not require using a single target 1-2-3 combo to start. Tomahawk no longer cancels your combo, and in extension of that, the combo timer has been extended from 15 seconds to 30 seconds. Now then, at level 54, Inner Beast is permanently upgraded to Fell Cleave, greatly increasing its potency. This potency increase means that Steel Cyclone is only superior on 3 or more targets. Additionally, the optimal Berserk window for 1-2 to two targets is now 3 Fell Cleaves. This is only possible by using Berserk either with 2 Infuriate Charges and 50 Beast Gauge, or 100 Beast Gauge and 1 Infuriate Charge. Alternatively, the second best option is still to use Storm's Path and 2 Fell Cleaves. At level 56, you learn the short cooldown defensive ability, Raw Intuition. This ability reduces all damage you take by a bit, but more importantly causes each of your weapon skills to heal you for a significant amount per target you hit. Due to the duration of 6 seconds, there's only enough time for 3 weapon skills if you late weave this action, so try your best to do this. When used in an AoE scenario, this ability will almost always fully heal you on every weapon skill, making you nigh invincible in those 6 seconds. On a single target, the best result is still a very respectable 1200 potency. Due to the short cooldown of this ability, you should try to use this often. When cycling cooldowns, you may find it very useful to start with Raw Intuition, then use one of the longer options, and then Raw Intuition again, greatly extending the total time you can keep up defenses. At level 58, you learn the ability Equilibrium, which heals you for a large amount on a minute cooldown. If you are on low enough health to make use of all the health received, you can assist your healer and give them more time by using this. I recommend when cycling cooldowns to use it to keep yourself up if there's only a few seconds left until raw intuition can carry you back up to safety. In a single target encounter, equilibrium is equally as powerful as raw intuition for healing. At level 60, steel cyclone is permanently upgraded to decimate. For 3 or more targets, the optimal Berserk window is still 3 decimates. This is done in the same ways as described for Fell Cleave. For 1 or 2 targets, the best option is still 3 Fell Cleaves. The only major change since level 50 to your rotation is that Fell Cleave is superior to Storm's Path, which means you always need 150 Beast Gauge for an optimal Berserk. Defensively, you have two of your best survival cooldowns, Raw Intuition standing out as such a potent healing tool that on AoE, it makes you nearly invincible. It is also viable to use Holm Gang to last a few extra seconds to then apply Raw Intuition's healing to save yourself in a tough spot as another suggestion for inspiration. At level 62, you learn the ability Onslaught, which functions as a gap closer. It can hold up to two charges and generates one every 30 seconds. Because the warrior job does not itself have any ability to buff its non-weapon skill attacks, you can, outside of optimization with a raid team, make extremely liberal use of this ability. In fact, 
Due to it containing two charges, you should always use it in such a way that one charge is busy charging at all times. If you are trying to optimize, keep in mind that the distance onslaught can move you in an instant can save you over 3 seconds of running. So it is rarely worth sitting on onslaught charges if you need to run a significant distance to your target. At level 64, you learn the ability Upheaval, which causes you to punch your opponent in the face. It has no cost and a 30 second cooldown, so you should use it whenever it is available for some free damage. Make sure to weave it between your weapon skills. While Upheaval is not affected by Berserk, it is affected by Surging Tempest, so try to make sure Upheaval is always used while this damage bonus is active. At level 66, you gain the trait Enhanced Infuriate, which causes Fellow Cleave and Decimate to reduce the cooldown of Infuriate by 5 seconds. This does not change your rotation, although it does let you have a lot more beast gauge to work with. You should of course try your best to never sit on both charges of Infuriate, and one way to avoid that even at the start of combat is to weave Infuriate after your first GCD. Since Infuriate simply gives you Beast Gauge, you will start combat with at least 50 Beast Gauge instead of 0. At level 68, you learn the ability Shake It Off, which shields you and all party members for a decent amount of damage. The cooldown isn't too long, so you can use it whenever you see raid wide damage incoming. In a pinch, you can also use it to protect just yourself or just an individual player that really needs it. Keep in mind that Shake It Off has an additional effect to remove some of your other defensive cooldowns should they be active on you to make the potency of the shield larger. In most scenarios, you don't want this, so make sure to plan the use of Shake It Off around this. At level 70, Berserk is permanently upgraded to Inner Release, adding a couple of extra effects on top of Berserk's existing effects. Beast Gauge weapon skills become free. And also, you're immune to most crowd controlling effects in the game, including knockbacks and stuns. How this changes your rotation is that you no longer need to stockpile Beast Gauge for the Berserk window, as you can freely use 3 Fell Cleaves or Decimates as you see fit. The immunity portion is very neat, but is mostly seen as a detail. Keep in mind that if you use a weapon skill that does not cast Beast Gauge in the inner release window, it will still spend one of the stacks, so make sure to plan it so that you only use Fell Cleave or Decimate as your next 3 weapon skills after activating inner release. For your rotation since level 60, the big changes are that you now have Onslaught and Upheaval as some OGCD attacks, Onslaught mainly affecting your mobility. On top of that, you can now always find the Beast Gauge to do 3 Fell Cleaves or 3 Decimates in the inner release window. From now on, you should make sure that Infuriate isn't going to reach 2 charges in the inner release window, but aside from this, your rotation is mostly the same, just with more Fell Cleaves. At level 72, Infuriate is upgraded to grant the effect Nascent Chaos. This causes Decimate to turn into Chaotic Cyclone, either until you use it or until 30 seconds pass. Chaotic Cyclone is a super steel cyclone that is always guaranteed to do critical direct damage as if it inherently has the Berserk effect. It also inherently reduces the cooldown of Infuriate, just like Fell Cleave and Decimate. On two or more targets, Chaotic Cyclone is better than Fell Cleave. You could also argue that the effect of guaranteeing critical direct damage makes the average damage of Chaotic Cyclone higher than that of Fell Cleave on single target. But keep in mind that Fell Cleave is superior if its damage is by chance either critical or a direct hit. In my opinion, it is not a big enough damage difference that it is worth changing your rotation over it. An important factor to consider when using this action is that, because it inherently has the Berserk effect, you should avoid using Inner Release along with it as it wastes some of the value of Inner Release. On AoE pulls, your opener now should specifically be to use Overpower, Weaving Infuriate, then Mithril Tempest to get Surging Tempest, and then using Chaotic Cyclone once the enemies are all bunched up. And then you use Inner Release and 3 Decimates. One detail regarding an interaction of Chaotic Cyclone with Raw Intuition. All weapon skills in the Warrior Arsenal that inherently critical hits, like Chaotic Cyclone does, also automatically causes the heal from Raw Intuition to always critically heal. This is a bit of a niche piece of information, but it might end up being useful. At level 74, Mithril Tempest is improved to grant 20 Beast Gauge. This causes your AoE rotation to generate Beast Gauge as fast as your single target Storm's Path combo. 
While this does not change your rotation's priorities at all, it does allow you to use Decimate much more regularly on AoE. At level 76, Shake It Off is improved to also heal everyone for a decent amount on cast. Mainly, this means you have access to a raid heal on a moderate cooldown, so try your best to make use of it regularly. More importantly, you also learn the ability Nascent Flash. On a shared cooldown with Raw Intuition, this action instead applies Nascent Flash to you and Nascent Glint to an ally. Nascent Flash applies the same healing component of Raw Intuition to yourself, but Nascent Glint applies both the same healing as well as the damage reduction component of Raw Intuition. Both of these effects last 6 seconds just like Raw Intuition, so you should still try to late weave it. Some players like to use macros to help them target for Nascent Flash. If you're going to use Raw Intuition only for the healing component anyway, then you should instead use Nascent Flash and use the opportunity to heal someone else along with you. On the other hand, when tanking large amounts of damage, it is likely more beneficial to keep the damage reduction component for yourself. Remember that Nascent Flash also has the automatic critical heal interaction with Chaotic Cyclone. At level 78, Thrill of Battle is improved to also increase the healing you receive for its duration by 20%. This additional component causes Thrill of Battle to change from being simply a heal with some extra temporary health to become an indirect damage reduction by both expanding your health bar while also expanding incoming heals to match. With this improvement, there is reason to use Thrill of Battle as a higher priority cooldown as this places its power level as a defensive cooldown somewhere between Rampart and Reprisal. If you combine Thrill of Battle with Equilibrium or Raw Intuition, you will also receive more healing from these actions, so it is recommended to use Equilibrium at some point during Thrill of Battle. At level 80, Nascent Chaos is improved to turn Felcleave into Inner Chaos. Just like Chaotic Cyclone, this attack both has the innate Berserk effect as well as the innate ability to reduce the cooldown of Infuriate. Its potency makes it superior to Chaotic Cyclone on one or two targets. Remember to separate the uses of Inner Release from uses of Infuriate. This means that at level 80, your opener in combat should typically be Heavy Swing, Weave Infuriate, Maim, Storm's Eye, Inner Chaos, Weave Upheaval and Inner Release, 3 Fell Cleaves, Weaving Onslaught after the first and optionally after the second, and then at the end, Weave Infuriate to do another Inner Chaos. At level 82, Raw Intuition is permanently upgraded to Blood Wedding. This increases its duration to 8 seconds and adds an extra, half as long damage reduction effect equally as large as the first one, known as Stem the Flow, rewarding you for timing the use of Blood Wedding closer to the incoming damage. It also adds a barrier to your unuse, called Stem the Tide. These two effects, Stem the Tide and Stem the Flow, alongside the 8 second duration, are all added onto Nascent Flash, and both are in this case applied to your target, not you. As long as you continue to efficiently late weave these, it is now possible to fit 4 weapon skills in the window, increasing the healing. When a tank buster is coming your way, try to time the application of blood wedding in a late weave so that you both get the maximum healing and the maximum damage reduction. At level 84, your 1 2 3 combos for single target get a potency boost. This does not really change your rotation. Equilibrium is also further upgraded to apply a heal over time effect, nearly doubling its healing potential. It does not change how you use it though. At level 86, you learn the ability Orogeny, which functions as an AoE alternative to upheaval, even sharing its cooldown. On 3 or more targets, you use this instead to punch everyone around you in the face, instead of just your target. At level 88, Onslaught is granted an extra charge. This does not change how you should use it, but it does grant you even more freedom in how you choose to use it for mobility or damage. At level 90, you learn the weapon skill Primal Rend. Whenever you use Inner Release, you are granted one single use of Primal Rend, and it itself uniquely is not affected by Inner Release and does not spend the stacks either. This attack causes you to whirl into the air and onto your target as a gap closing effect and does an enormous amount of guaranteed critical direct hit damage to the target and even does some damage in an area around it. Needless to say, you should use this attack once per inner release. Note that the opportunity to use Primal Rent doesn't end when inner release ends. To round off, let's cover an opener, followed by single target rotation, 
then AOE adjustments, and then briefly go over stat priorities. This opener is adjusted in a way to make space both for tinctures, damage boosting potions, and is planned out to align with the raid buffs should they be available. If you are the main tank, make sure that Defiance is active. Then open by pulling the target with Tomahawk and weave Infuriate as you run toward it. Then, once you are in range, use Heavy Swing, Maim and Storm's Eye. If you plan to use a Tincture, use it after Maim. Then, you use Inner Chaos while weaving Upheaval and Inner Release. Then use Primal Rend followed by 3 Fell Cleaves, weaving Onslaught after Primal Rend and the first Fell Cleave and optionally after the second Fell Cleave if you won't need the movement. After the third fell cleave you weave infuriate again and deliver another in a chaos, which leads us to the general rotation. Make sure to use upheaval on cooldown and use onslaught often enough that you don't sit on all three charges. Use infuriate as they come available, although it may be beneficial to save one if you are in a coordinated raid to line it up with raid cooldowns. Be sure to not use Infuriate at the same time as Inner Release, and if Inner Release is coming up, you should keep in mind that Infuriate will take nearly 25 seconds of its cooldown in an Inner Release window, so use an Infuriate charge if this will result in you having two. Whenever you have over 50 Beast Gauge, use Fell Cleave as long as Searching Tempest is up. If Searching Tempest is running low, use Storm's Eye. In particular, try to refresh its duration if it's going below 15 seconds. Inner Release automatically adds 10 seconds to Searching Tempest, allowing you to do the entire Inner Release window safely, as long as you enter it with Searching Tempest active. For AoE adjustments, meaning 3 or more targets, you replace your 1-2-3 combos with the 1-2 Mithril Tempest combo. Keep in mind Overpower is a frontal cone while Mithril Tempest is a circle around you. Decimate replaces Fell Cleave, Chaotic Cyclone replaces Inner Chaos, and Orogeny replaces Upheaval. You can still use Onslaught for damage on AoE, and Primal Rend should definitely still be used on AoE, as its reduced AoE damage is still more than Decimate. Finally, regarding stat priorities. Warrior is the odd one out of the four tanks, as Warrior does not care about skill speed at all, and Direct Hit, too, is undesirable due to how many of the attacks that automatically direct it anyway. On the other hand, because warriors automatically critically hit so often, the fact that critical hit also increases the critical hit damage in addition to the chance means that a lot of the time, critical hit is equal to a literal damage bonus. After critical hit, determination is your second best option, followed by tenacity, simply because they both increase your damage outright. Determination is significantly more potent at this however, and the damage reduction tenacity provides simply scales too poorly to be noticeable. This means that your stat priority should be gear item level and by extension weapon damage, critical hit, determination, tenacity. Sometimes it is suggested that a single percent of direct hit can be amazing, but it should be stated that having those points as tenacity instead usually will result in a higher average result for a warrior. If you plan to play multiple tank jobs with warrior among them, the other tanks typically scale better with determination than warrior scales with direct hit, so add any direct hit to the other tank's weapons. On the other hand, while skill speed is highly undesirable for warriors, the other tanks may have difficulty functioning properly without a certain amount of it. In that case, I would suggest going for the minimum skill speed necessary for the other tank job to work. That is all for this video, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or stories of big fell cleaves, please leave a comment down below. Fun fact, when targeting an enemy while using Holmgang, which is usually the case, you bind them to the floor for the duration. What is dangerous about this is if the enemy dies, all of the Holmgang effect is removed, including your inability to die.